Hi, my name is Officer Gonzalez. I work for PSA5. Uh, the area we cover is basically the housing developments within the 23rd, the 25th, and the 28th precinct. Uh, my function, I fall under community affairs. So uh, we do a lot of community events, but I focus primarily on um, the senior citizens. So we have seniors who are the victims of a crime. You know, I do home visits. I also see, um, I'm kind of like the liaison between the victim and NYCHA to see if they can get, you know, an emergency transfer. And we also work with agencies like Safe Horizon, you know, if, you know, they're in need of any services. Um, we also work with domestic violence. And, but, you know, that's pretty much it. I do seminars. Um, I've been a police officer for 13 years. Um, and I've been in this position for two years. So um, I kind of wanted to switch it up a little bit and see if anybody has any concerns or they want specific safety tips. Because I know some people, um, especially with the seniors, they're victims of scams, for example. They might get a call from, let's say, Con Edison. Somebody came in to be Con Edison, and they're saying that, you know, we're going to turn off your services if you don't pay us, you know, $1,000. But they'll ask for it in, um, in a weird way. They'll ask for gift, Target gift cards, Best Buy gift cards. We have you know, we've had cases like that. Recently, I had a very unusual one where a senior was contacted regarding his computer um, firewall software, Norsen Antivirus, and they basically told him that his identity had been compromised and they were somehow able to get $76,000. So that was like his life savings, you know, and he you know, sent it to the people. I've also had cases where, you know, if this, the, the senior is not a, a citizen of the country, they'll call and say, we're going to deport you, you know, if you don't pay us $3,000. And again, they'll request gift cards from Target, Best Buy. And it sounds odd hearing about it now, but when you're in the moment or you're afraid of being arrested or deported, you kind of just, you know, you want to resolve the problem. Um, you know, but Con Edison, the IRS, they're not going to pull you and request payment via gift cards, you know, and the IRS, you know, they usually send something in writing. They're not going to send you an email or call you because we do have something called spoofing, which is basically where you can manipulate your caller ID to make it look like it's the IRS, it's, you know, the NYPD. So we have, we deal with a lot of scams, you know, we deal with also people who are trying to you know, move to a better location, get a nice apartment. And again, people, before you see the apartment, you know, you're sending them first month's, you know, rent and security. You never see the apartment and it just turns out to be, you know, this huge scam, but these people never get their money back. Um, you know, I just want to see if anybody has dealt with something in particular and if there's like any information or advice I can give you or something that you know, you're worried about or you have concerns about. We can open the floor to see if anybody has any questions and then I can address um, you know, whatever it is. I can say something. I'm Crystal. I work for the Office of Council Member Diana Ayala. Um, so usually I have constituents that they get calls uh, from the Social Security Office uh, saying that they either owe money or they have to pay money back so they get very afraid. Uh, they usually come here asking for advice and then we will help them with that. But some, I had other people that they just, they do what they gotta do because they are very afraid of getting in yeah. trouble, you know? Well, my thing is, you know, you can always ask questions and if you don't feel comfortable, you know, just hang up. Or let's say, for example, you have a number that is like a legit number for the Social Security Administration, then you you can always hang up and call back. You know, you don't have to stay on the line with that person if you feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. You don't have to give that person any information over the phone. And, you know, also if they can take a trip and go down there in person, you know, just to be sure, you know, go to an office and speak to somebody at the actual office. But if it's over the phone, you can always hang up, you know, if you feel uncomfortable you're not forced to give anybody even if it's somebody saying if I you know hey this is officer Gonzalez from because people do it and we actually had a case where they called the person saying that they're going to arrest them and the person hung up and they called they called that office and we verified that there's no officer by that name here 
you know, people get crafty, they get very creative, but you don't ever feel forced to give information over the phone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say something that um, that has happened to us um, as an agency is we will get um, emails um, pretending to be our clients and it'll be like the email that's very similar to our clients, maybe different by one number or one letter, um, you know, asking for money or like saying it's emergency, you know, I need searching care to send me money via a gift card or something like that. Um, you know, luckily the staff have been, you know, diligent enough and aware enough to recognize that those are strange requests. Um, but I've, I've found that that's something that's at least been happening at Search and Care. So I don't know if other nonprofits are experiencing that as well. It also is kind of similar with text messages, you know, like, and, and I get Yeah, so, Yaris, maybe you know, if I'll, you I'll, turn your video off, then your sound will be better just because the connection's not too great. Um, what I'm saying is, for example, I'll get messages from Citibank, right? Um, and they'll say that my Citibank account has been compromised. Meanwhile, I don't have a Citibank account. Um, so if you think about the amount of people that they send these text messages to, a lot of people are going to ignore it because they know it's, you know, it's nonsense. But even somebody is going to, you know, have a Citibank account and be concerned you know, and click on that link and give their social, their date of birth, and whatever information they're requesting. Yaris, is there any benefit for having community members report um, the various numbers or types of scams they're getting to the police department? Or is yes, it not um, beneficial because it changes so often? I was, I'm not no, sure. It does change often, but it is it's beneficial to report it because then that way, you know, it may be a little harder to catch these individuals. But the thing is, even if let's say these individuals are not caught, the thing is, the information is there for us to provide the community and let them know, hey, be aware of this scam or this that's going on. So even if you don't are not catching the individuals, people have the information, you know, my, my title is crime prevention. So my thing is to get information out to the public that will keep them from becoming victimized in the future. So it does make sense to report it because then that way we can share this information with other members of the community who aren't aware and that prevents them from being victimized. And then they can share that with family and friends and, you know, the information spreads to the community. Mm -hmm. Do you okay. have like a tip sheet that we could distribute to the older adults? I actually have um, senior safety booklets. Um, what I can do is um, I can drop some off for you or I, I can also scan it and put it in a, um, an email and forward it to Joseph and then he can share it with you guys if you would like that. Yes, that would be helpful. Okay, so I'll make sure I do that. Do you, um, has there been like um, more like escalated crimes against like older adults versus like, did they, are they getting held up or um, attacked on the streets recently? The numbers are going up uh, for seniors and for just, I think in general, but you know, that's why for example, you know, we'll share information like, let's say, if you're walking down the street, always make sure you walk in a well-lit area. You know, don't walk in a deserted area. If you feel that you're being followed, you know, head to a store that's open or a business. You know, if you're in an elevator, you know, the elevators have mirrors in the, in the top corners. Always look at those mirrors before looking into an elevator because sometimes people do hide in the corners. You know, if you feel uncomfortable, you don't get in the elevator. If God forbid something does happen in the elevator, you know, always stand by the panel where the buttons are so that you can hit those buttons and the elevator stops on, you know, on the next floor and you can pull out. That's some, that's some good tips and advice. Uh, uh, um, a number of um, older adult centers or senior centers um, have been sharing, you know, concerns 
um, that a lot of older adults are, you know, either reducing the amount of times they're going to the centers um, or not staying very late, right? They don't want to stay past three or five. Um, are there any suggestions or tips you have for the, the older adult centers or senior centers um, for their participants? Um, you know, like if you can, you know, go in a group, you know, because there's always safety in numbers, you know, and right, you know, if there is something going on, you know, don't be afraid, you know, to, to call 911, you know, and when you're going, let's say you go to the senior, you're on your way home, you know, always have your, you know, your keys in your hand, you know, have them ready, you know, for when you're going to, so you're not, let's say, fumbling through your purse, you know, or your pockets trying to find your keys, have them ready. If you live in a building, you know, where there's a lobby, make sure you close the door behind you. Um, but, you know, that's about it. But also if, you know, if the seniors do have concerns about, you know, going out at night, you know, maybe do have somebody pick you up or if somebody's taking you home, whether it's a, ta you know, taxi, accessoride or a friend, you know, make sure that they, you know, ask them to wait until you're inside safely before they leave. You know, and always have your phone on hand and just in case you do have to call 911. And so, so if there's um, a particular area or block or street in East Harlem, um, that community members or providers are identifying as having some kind of activity or community members feeling unsafe? Is that something that they could call call you or email you and, and share like this particular block people are noticing X, Y, Z? Is that something that would be possible to share with you? You can reach out to me or, you know, being that we only cover the 23rd, the 25th and the 28th, you know, also, you can call your local precinct as well, or you can also reach out to me as well, and we'll see, you know, we'll forward that information to the resident precincts, you know, but, you know, if you do have information that you feel would be helpful, like, always, always feel free to share it, because mm -hmm. that, that can, you know, that can prevent somebody from being, you know, the victim of something. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, and I think that it's, it's important just because who best to know what's going on in the community than the people that live in the community, right? Exactly. And that see the day in and day out and, and which areas they're feeling more concerned about versus others. Um, I know you mentioned the lighting. Um, a number of our clients have mentioned, you know, several streets that have poor lighting. Um, mm -hmm. Do you know, I mean, I, I guess you're not that department of, for the city, but do you know if there's any efforts to improve the lighting um, in East Harlem? Well, the thing is sometimes, you know, the, even this similar with, you know, traffic lights, there's like so many, there can be so many streets and it could be the city's not even aware of it. So in a situation like that, I believe you can always call 311 and they'll direct you to the agency because a lot of times you have to call and you make the complaint and now it's on record and it creates like a ticket number or a job number and now they they're forced to address it because it's on record. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and I don't, I don't want to put Crystal on the spot, but I guess since, you, <laughs> since you're here, um, you know, the lighting situation, is that something that people could, um, you know, call Diana Yella's office about um, to share various concerns about certain yes, streets they can... for lighting? They can call the office and um, mention the issue. But also, it's always good to call 311 so it can be reported in the system because a lot of um, there's a lot of times that people, they don't report the issues. And as the officer said, we are not aware of it. If you don't report it, you don't put it in 311, you don't create a ticket, it's not going to be, uh, you know, in the system. So it's good to have that as well. But they can always call the office, as, you know. Yeah, and I, and I would imagine that, that a lot of these things are underreported. Uh, Mr. Norvell, was that you? Did you have a question? Yeah, yeah. Um, what about this problem, this issue of people with motorcycles on the sidewalk or driving on the street, you know, on the sidewalk instead of the street? We have a lot of people with these motorcycles and stuff, and they're going up and down on the sidewalk. 
and this is particularly the case in public housing development. But but it, but it's all over, you know. It's just uh, and if you are disabled, if you're on a rollator or something like that, it becomes really disconcerting, you know. Now now they're at this, at this time, it's like they're not racing on the street on the sidewalks yet, but some of them starting to get a little faster and faster on the sidewalks and. Uh, I, I said, you know, the motorcycle is a car. Let's, let's face it. It is a car. It's a big uh, vehicle. It is not a bike. And I wonder why the police and that don't uh, just uh, confiscate these motorcycles or ask these people if they have a license to drive a motorcycle. I bet you they don't. And, and then just confiscate these motorcycles. It's just it's too many of them, and it's too many of them on the sidewalk. Just that you're absolutely right. Uh, for example, PSA five, we with, we are increasing the summonses that are being issued, and also you know a lot of these bikes are illegal, and they're being left in walkways, and they're chaining them to a gate. So what mm -hmm. they're doing at PSA five is, you know, if it's left there, they'll you know they clip the lock, and they transport them back to PSA five where we voucher them, and if somebody's trying to claim it, they have to now show proof. Of uh, we had a big issue in East River Houses, for example, where they were just leave, like leaving these huge dirt pipes in the walkways, and they would even leave them with a huge container of gasoline next to it. So I know PSA 5, our NCOs, the Neighborhood Coordination Officers, they confiscated those bikes. Um, we've even found them in the hallways. They'll chain them to a radiator inside the development, you know, mm -hmm. and if the officers come across that, you know, they'll clip the lock and we confiscate those bikes. And right now there is a, a big, you know, you guys might not see it out there, but there is a big initiative where, you know, the pound where we, you know, drop off vouchered vehicles and motorcycles, those are full of motorcycles and scooters where they basically, you know, they destroy them. Um, Crystal, I believe your hand's up. Do you have another question? Yes, I think she kind of uh, um, answered my question. So it, it applies to the scooters and also to the bicycles, right? The electric ones? Uh -huh. Yes, because the electric bicycle, even though it physically looks like a bicycle, the fact that it is electric, we consider mm -hmm. that a motor vehicle. So those vehicles are also right. confiscated and they're vouchered because, you know, that creates the potential of, you know, a kid playing or walking on the sidewalk and mm -hmm. getting run over and hurt because it's happened before. You know, even a collision with a with a, a bicycle, you know, you can kill a person or badly injure a person. So, mm -hmm. you know, there there is a, an initiative in the city um, where they are summoning and complicating these um. Hey, do you, is there any a specific number that people can call for that? Because we have seen them a lot on the sidewalk and, it, and we have a lot of senior citizens walking to our office or walking around the neighborhood. And we have we had a lot of complaints about that. You can always call 911 or if you see that people are storing them or keeping them out on the sidewalk, you can always call your local precinct because what they do is they go out there, they clip that chain and they confiscate it. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. um, I know um, Yaris, you may have to leave in a couple minutes. I just wanted to open the floor larger <laughs> for some of the people that didn't get an opportunity to um, you know, share anything or ask questions before you are asleep. Sure. Joseph, can I ask a question? Sure, you can go. Mm -hmm. um, what exactly is a PSA station? And uh, is that like a um, subdivision of, of, of a precinct? I don't understand what that means. Okay, so it's basically, we are NYPD officers, but PSA stands for Police Service Area. So the area that we patrol is the housing developments. So PSA 5, for example, we are located on 123rd Street, but we cover all of the housing developments within the 23rd, the 25th, and the 28th precinct. Oh, okay. So if you dial so 911, if, you might get somebody from that station rather than from the precinct? Well, it depends. So if, let's say a NYCHA resident calls if their home is in housing in our jurisdiction, we will respond. Or let's say, for example, but that's not to say that we won't address an issue. Let's say, for example, if somebody walks into our precinct to make a report and the crime could happen in the 23rd precinct off of housing, we will still take that 
report and we forward it to the 23rd precinct to their detective squad and they look into it. But you can walk into any precinct and make a report for a crime that happened in any of the five boroughs. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, does anybody else have a question or comment for Yaris? Um, I'd, I'd like to encourage Officer Gonzalez to like be in touch with this committee. Like if, if anything new comes up that you're learning about that affects older adults, um, a lot of people on this call work directly with older adults. And so, you know, we can help to let our older adults know that a certain, you know, thing is going on that could affect them. Absolutely. That's, and that's the reason that I reached out to Joseph, because my function is, you know, to address issues that affect, you know, seniors, whether it's in housing or it might be, you know, in the area that we cover. So I wouldn't mind doing, you know, a monthly seminar like we're doing today, you know, for any updates or any new information that I have. And the same thing with you guys. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, or something you can share with me, you know, I wouldn't mind setting something up with you guys monthly. Sounds great. I think if you could put your contact information in the chat, I think that'll help all of us. Okay, I, I will do that. Thank mm -hmm. you. And I can also share it um, afterwards via email as well. Okay, that would um, be perfect. Mm-hmm. Does anybody else have a question or comment? Um, it could, you can also just share if there's a, con a specific concern you are noticing or, you know, before Yaris ha happens to leave. Okay, I don't see anybody. Um, I just one question, and this is actually, well, actually, let me, let me give you an opportunity to close out before I do the next thing. Um, but thank you again, Yaris. Um, I'm so glad to have connected with you. Um, we would love for you to attend, you know, our future meetings and have a presence. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of people that work with older adults, including some older adults themselves that are on the call. Um, so we can have a, a nice um, partnership, I think. I'm looking forward to working with you guys on a regular basis. You know, that's the, that is why, you know, I reached out because a lot of times, you know, our seniors are ignored or they're neglected or they may feel like they don't have a voice. Um, so you know if I suck with Zoom I don't really know how to use it if you can share my information you know you guys can always feel free to give me a call or email me if you know it doesn't have to be you know you know because we're doing a seminar if you need help something I'll be glad to help you or see if I can't find somebody who can. um but that's about it thank you so much for having me Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you taking your time out of your busy schedule and everyone here, actually, because I know we're all super busy and, you know, time, time strapped. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. And I, you know, I wouldn't mind doing this on a monthly basis, just, you know, to touch base and see if you guys need help with anything or anything new that I can share with you guys. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. So I guess we could still stay on, you know, we're, we don't have to stay the full hour and a half, I think, you know, we don't need to drag it on if it doesn't need to be, um, but we could stay on a little longer. And if people want to share some additional questions or concerns, um, or maybe even feedback for the session, um, I was unaware, by the way, that she had to leave so early. So maybe something must have came up. Um, so that's, but that's fine. Um, one of the things I just wanted to ask, and again, sorry, Crystal, to put you on the spot. I do know that there are, you know, there is some legislation going out. I don't know if it, there's some city or state ones, but I, I have heard that there is legislation coming out um, mm -hmm. to try to address the, the motorized um, scooters. Um, so I don't know if you can share anything about that, because I, I think it's always important to have community members, you know, be aware of the different legislation out there and to tell their legislators that's something that they want and support. So I don't have a lot of information about it, but if you give me time, I can gather the information that you need about that and I can share with you guys. Okay, awesome. Yes. Yeah, yes. I think, yeah, I think a lot of it may be state and not city. 
Um, but mm-hmm. yeah, if, if Crystal, you could look into that and we could always share. I always mm-hmm. encourage people to reach out to their legislators, um, mm-hmm. including when they're doing something good, <laughs> not just to, to complain, um, but um, you know, share with them that if they are doing and supporting something that you like, right, to let them know that they're doing the right thing. I think that's important. Um, so again, just wanted to open the floor to everyone. I just want to say um, it's great that you're here, Crystal, because for many, many, many years, Diana has supported and, you know, been a stalwart um, champion for older adults in East Harlem. So it's wonderful that, you know, you're here representing her and you can carry back to her, you know, some of the things that are going on in our committee um, and, and even maybe some things that you know, she would like us to share with the older adults. Um, You know, there are leaders, there's community members and leaders of programs that older adults participate in here. So it's a really good conduit for Diana, you know, if she wants to get like a mess, the message out. So thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for the invitation. (laughs) Well, we're going to keep inviting you, I think, right, Joseph? Please. <laughs> yes, of course. Uh, Mr. Norvell, did you have something? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, for um, um, Crystal, I believe your name is here. You, you represent for Diana Ayala. Um, yeah, I've been trying to find out something. Uh, we uh, have the, you know, the Harlem Community Justice Center. And we don't know whether they're open or closed or what, but we have usually the lawyers come in and help us with the income recertification forms, you know, public housing. And, you know, we, people have different times when they, um, schedules, when they bring in their forms and stuff. My uh, form is scheduled for, for, for June. I brought my stuff in in May and they said, oh no, you're not yet. So it's in June. And now, at, there's no communication at all with the Home Community Justice Center at all. The um, the rent officer says says that uh, they're not on the calendar, you know. And then you try and call the office, your you know your calls are uh, electronically rerouted to 111 Center Street. So 111 Center Street says, "Why are you calling here?" And so we didn't. Call, I didn't call you here. I didn't call you. I was trying <laughs> to call the uh, Home uh, um, Justice Center, and so. We have just no contact with them at all, and we need the income verification forms filled out. You know, they're very good at doing that. Right? We don't, I think most people don't trust the NYCHA, um, uh, uh, I hate to say it, the NYCHA uh, housing assistance and that, and that computer thing, that computer uh, that, that's in the uh, rent offices is terrible, and nobody wants, you know, the wrong, you know, information to go in, you know, have, uh, you know, your digits transposed and if you you know you're you know you're owing something like um you know um i don't know let's just say you owe something like um 250 dollars you know just say for rent all of a sudden it turns into 520 because digits are turned around you don't want that so we we're very comfortable with the uh the lawyers from the Harlem justice center but we can't make contact you know with them so I, i'm really really um i'm up in arms about that I mean, I can try to, I can reach out to them and ask them any office hours at this moment, if they are seeing clients one-on-one or if they still working from home, I can ask that and share with Joseph maybe, or with you guys. And also I'm going to check about the legislation. So I can do that for you, but I want to also let you know that our office, we work with that as well. So we have constituent services hours, social services hours from 9 a.m. in the morning to 4 p.m. in the afternoon. And if you have any city-related issue, you can come to the office that um, includes the NYCHA recertification, Section A recertification. If you need to recertify for Medicaid or SNAPS, you can always come with your application. If you have an online application, but you need help with your online application, we can always help you with that, but you need to bring your username, password, and also you have to have the app on your phone because that application, they're doing it through the app the, for SNAPS and, and Medicaid and all of that. Oh, okay. Um, okay. So you're welcome to join us too, but if you want to go to the Harlem Community Justice mm-hmm. Center, 
I can always reach out to them. I can okay. email them and ask them okay. for their schedule. I got to I got answer the door. Thank you. No I problem. Do. Yes, anytime. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, anybody else have any questions or comments? You know, and, and we're open to anything. Um, I guess I can also just open the floor if anybody wants to share any um, anything about their agency, anything about any upcoming events. We always like to give people that opportunity. Um, we also like to try to make this space, you know, a welcoming networking space as well. So if anybody wants to share anything about their agency or any upcoming events, I'll give you the floor. Hi, thank you for joining us. Do, do you have anything you want to share? Uh, actually, this is Shirley Saxon, Public Affairs is so Oh, hi, Shirley. My apologies, <laughs> yeah, for being so late in joining. I'm just happy to take a moment away from uh, my, my daily routine to participate in uh, listening today um, for the, the presentation that you mentioned when you sent the invite. Thank you. Thank you, Shirley. Um, yeah, so, so Yaris, our presenter, actually had to leave early, so she did her spiel, just letting you know, um, but I'm opening the floor for people to um, share any community concerns they may have or offer an opportunity for them to share about their agency or any upcoming events they may be having. Okay, so can I just take a moment to say that um, our offices are open and we are you know, doing appointments, virtual appointments, and when necessary, people can, can walk in. But again, I'm the public affairs person for Manhattan and Staten Island. If any of the people on this call are experiencing difficulty in getting service from their local Social Security office, please reach out to me, Shirley.Saxton at SSA.GOV and I'll see what I can do to help you. Thanks for the time. Thank you. I'm sorry, I, um, there was somebody that was, uh, I don't know, they were dialing out and I didn't hear something you said, you're from what agency? Because I was mm -hmm. beeping all over the place. You, you, okay, you I'm that? from I'm Social sorry. Security. I'm from the Social Security oh, okay. Administration. Oh. Um, I'm the public uh -huh. affairs person. So I was just reminding oh, okay. people that they can reach out to me if they're having difficulty of obtaining service with the local field office in Manhattan or Staten Island, okay? Thank you. Okay. okay. Thank you. Oop, Getty, you're muted. Uh, good morning, uh, Shirley. It's nice that you could join us. I, I have a question. Could you, do, could you like tell us what the Medicare savings program is? Not the shared savings program, but the Medicare savings program. Okay, so um, for the person that asked about the Medicare savings program, I kind of can't give you that information in two sentences. So if you'll send me an email, shirley.saxton at ssa.gov, I'll send the information that I have available on the uh, Medicare savings program. Um, Social Security collects the premiums for Medicare, but the savings program is not something that we are responsible for but I'm happy to share information that I have available with you. So please just email me. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Shirley. Crystal? Yes, so I wanted to say um, also that we have a tenant support unit here the first Thursday of the month for non-NYCHA residents from 10.30 uh, a.m. to 4 p.m. So if we have uh, somebody that have any issues with Cree, DRE, or any um, issues with the building, they can come and see the representative. Also, we have a NYCHA legal clinic with, um, with the Urban Justice Center, and they come to our office the first Tuesday of the month from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. And if you have any problems with repairs, harassment, anything related to your NYCHA re development, uh, you're welcome to join us, and we will have a attorney here helping but it, they only come once a month i just wanted to let and you this know is, this is this office is what what this is with the um with diana yala's office 
Yes. We are located uh, at 105 East 116 between Lexington and Park. And I can also share the flyer with Joseph and with you guys as well. We, Diana always share in her social media. I don't know if you have her on Facebook and also her Instagram. So we usually promote the clinic, um, but yeah, so this, I just wanted to let you know. So this, so this is the first uh, Tuesday of the month, right? So you- so, for, so Yeah, for the NYCHA uh, development will be okay. the first Tuesday of the month from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Okay. here in our office. And for the non NYCHA, it will be the first Thursday from 10.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Now, I tell you, um, I, uh, I my city, oh, my city, and Diana is not exactly my city council uh, representative, my city, because I'm, I'm, I'm on 133rd Street, but I can still come down to the, to the office on the first Tuesday with a NYCHA issue. Just come. Yeah, you're in Manhattan, right? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just on Fifth okay, Avenue yeah. on 33rd Street. <laughs> you can okay, try to okay, come, and if you fair. want, I can also ask the the legal representative. I don't think there will be any issue with that. Oh, okay, okay, this is okay. good. This is good. I need, uh, yeah, I need some assistance. Thank you, thank you. Um, Dozine, I see your hands raised. Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for the opportunity and uh, Joseph for arranging um, today's uh, meeting with the police uh, precinct. That was very helpful. I wanted to share that the Carter Burton Network located at 312 East 109th Street um, on July 28th from 10 to 12, we'll be offering uh, COVID vaccinations as well as the boosters. If people have not received their first fat, um, shot, we'll be offering that as well as the second boosters. So I'm putting that in the chat for anyone who's interested. And this is being offered by the Ryan Health um, Center. So I will share that information as well in the chat. Thank you. Are they offering, are you offering both Moderna and Pfizer? Yes. Good to see you, Dozine. <laughs> Dozine, you're muted. <laughs> this is why I go between the video on, muted. I get it together. It's only been three years now. Um, <laughs> so, but yes, it's great to see you as well. Thank you. Thank you for joining. Um, does anybody else have anything they want to share? Um, I know that the East Harlem Senior Health Fair is coming. I don't know if that's something, Crystal, you're able to share if that's for public consumption yet. <laughs> so, so I can say it. Um, so um, as you know, previously we canceled the Power of Aging Well Festival because of rain that never happened, you know? <laughs> uh, so now we're gonna have it the second uh, week of September. So our idea is to have it for uh, September 15th, that is a Thursday. And if it rains, we will have it on the 16th, that is a Friday. However, yesterday I submitted a permit to the Parks Department, so I'm waiting for them to approve it. Mm. I spoke to them previously and they said that the September uh, schedule agenda was empty. So we shouldn't have any problems, but I still want to wait for that document that says approved so we can move forward. Yeah. But as of now, it will be the uh, September 15th. But as soon as that is approved, we will uh, share with the community, okay? Awesome, thank you. And if you could just no. keep me in the loop with that so I can yeah, of course. spread the word and share. Okay, perfect. Um, okay, does anybody else have anything? Uh, hi, Crystal, this is James from Lenox Hill uh, Neighborhood House. Could you share your information um, that we could reach you? Yes, of course. I'm going to put it in the chat, okay? Thank you so much. No problem, anytime. Sorry, Crystal's probably like, I should have not came. Now everyone's going to email me. <laughs> no, no, as long, <laughs> listen, as long as it, it has to be city, don't forget city, 
and uh, you're in the district, just reach out to us. If you're not in the district and we're able to connect you with your district, we will do that as well. So you're gonna go, you're gonna leave with some type of information, okay? <laughs> Thank you, Crystal. <laughs> no problem. Team player. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, anybody else before we begin to close out? All right. Well, thank you everyone for joining. Um, uh, I hope everyone continues to engage and come to future meetings. We usually have quarterly meetings. Um, I'm not sure the next one is not scheduled yet, but we will probably um, assist with outreach for the um, Power of Aging Well Health Fair um, in September. So um, you'll probably be receiving some emails about that from us. Um, and I guess Crystal will share with us the tabling form whenever that comes out again. And if any of anyone on the call wants their organization to table there, um, you know, when Crystal sends that to me, I can send it out to everyone. Um, I will also send, um, I guess it's a post survey for this meeting. Um, so I'll send it out via email to everyone. Um, but thank you again for attending. Um, and yeah, appreciate everyone's time. Getty, thank you any for last having words? Us. Okay, <laughs> bye bye. Thank you. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Okay, everybody, thank you. have a good day. <laughs>